Hi friends, welcome back to At Home with Holly. My name is Holly and I'm so glad that you're here with me today. Today we are in the kitchen <laughs> and um, I had a couple extra dozen eggs that I wanted to use up. So I was lowing, running low on breakfast. I usually do breakfast burritos or um, oatmeal bakes or we actually made some granola together. And I thought, let's do some like mini quiche. What happened was <laughs> I was at Starbucks drive through and they had on the menu these like potato, egg, chive, like bites. They were like little mini quiches essentially. And I was like, I can make that probably better <laughs> at home. Um, so that's what we're going to do today is inspired by the Starbucks that they had a limited um, edition item. Anyway, so we're going to be making those breakfast, um, make ahead breakfast things, and I'll be able to freeze them and just warm them up when I want one on the go, which is perfect. Um, and then I also want to make some, um, what are they called? Butterscotch. Let me see the recipe here. Soft and chewy oatmeal scotchies. <laughs> Not healthy. Definitely going to be delicious. Excited to try it. So I've got the recipes that I need. And we're going to go ahead and get started getting everything ready so that we are good to go. I think that the, um, I should make the oatmeal scotchies recipe first because they have to cool. The dough has to cool. Yeah, the dough has to cool. So we're going to make that one first. Let me get my mixer and all of our ingredients ready. Run out of room on this counter. <laughs> okay, let me get this organized. Let me bring you in a little bit closer so you can see what we're doing too. I gotta get the mixing bowl too. Okay, so you have to make the dough to this and then the dough has to chill for 45 minutes. So we will make our um, little egg quiche things while this is chilling. Okay, we're going to do paddle attachment on this and need a second bowl. Okay, what size measuring cups do I need? First of all, I need this butter at room temperature, which I did not do. <laughs> so let me get that in the microwave really quick. Perfect. Okay, so what we're gonna do, ooh, you're still up high, let me drop you down. Okay, my friends, here we go. So first we're going to mix our dry ingredients into this bowl. Let me get the measuring cups. Okay, so this recipe calls for rolled oats. I have a ton of rolled oats, but I also accidentally bought quick cooking oats and I need to use them up. So um, I'm gonna use quick cooking oats in this, but for the dry ingredients, the first dry ingredients, we're gonna put flour, cinnamon, baking soda, and salt in here. So we need one and a half cups of flour. Cinnamon. So a half teaspoon, we'll do a heaping one. Okay. 
this is a half teaspoon. So one teaspoon of baking soda and three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. Okay, whisk and put to the side. Now, Just my dishwasher. One cup of dark sh brown sugar and half a cup of white sugar. This is a quarter cup, my half cup is in the dishwasher, which I need to unload clean and I need to unload it. So we are going to beat this together for two minutes until it's creamy. On this day, since Olivia was going to be coming home soon, I was definitely trying more than I normally do to clean up as I go so that we could spend time together when she got home. I also started to second guess myself when I was getting the oatmeal ready. I ended up using um, a cup and a half of the quick cooking oats and then I was like okay let me get just a cup and a half so we'll do half and half of the rolled oats as well just in case it was going to create any texture issues they turned out great I think I didn't need to do that but either way that's what I did this time just scrape down the sides this dough was really thick. I think I scraped down the sides of the bowl more times in this recipe than I ever have before, but it ended up turning out great, so that's totally fine. But so while this was mixing again, after I scraped down the sides, I went ahead and decided to get the next step of the recipe ready, which was two eggs, room temperature, and then it also called for um, molasses and a little bit of vanilla. And so I went ahead and got all those ingredients in one bowl ready to go for the next step when it called for it. All right, so this is what we're looking like. Looks pretty good. We are going to add in um, our eggs, molasses, and vanilla that we put right here. So we are going to add this in um, and mix for another minute, and then we'll mix the dry in as well. So after we poured in our mixture, I did scrape down the sides one more time. <laughs> Actually, not the last time that I was scraped down the sides, but we got it all mixed in. I think that extra little bit of molasses really does change the flavor, though, so I'm pretty excited about these. Okay, so it says to add the dry ingredients to the wet ingredients, mix um, until combined, and then with it on low, add in the butterscotch and the oats, and it will be thick and sticky, and then we're supposed to cover and let it chill for 45 minutes. The dry ingredients added first. The recipe says that you can make this with a hand mixer, and I think you absolutely could, but this is a very thick dough, so if you have a stand mixer, I would recommend that. I'll scrape down just once. So after I added in the dry mixture ingredients and they were all combined, then I went ahead and added in the oats and the butterscotch chips, butterscotch chips and the dough was finished and ready to cool. I'm gonna scrape this down and do it by hand. It's getting pretty thick in there. It smells so good. I think you're either a butterscotch person or you're not, and I am. So I was excited to try this. I had that bag, oops, I had the bag of butterscotch morsels sitting in my pantry for longer than I want to admit. <laughs> so this. This is the perfect way to use them up. Now, I am for sure, this is a lot of dough. <laughs> I am for sure going to freeze most of this. 
but okay so cover and chill the dough for at least 45 minutes then roll into balls because it's basically it's too sticky right now okay so we're going to cover this put it in the fridge for 45 minutes and then we'll roll it into the perfect cookie amount per cookie and we'll go from there let me get this covered and i'll put it in the fridge So this dough, since it says it needed to chill in the fridge for at least 45 minutes, I decided to take a minute to reset the kitchen. So I went ahead and unloaded the dishwasher that had been <laughs> sitting there clean all morning. And I cleaned off the counters, put away all of the mixer and equipment and stuff that we needed for the cookies. And then I went ahead and got ready and set up for our um, egg breakfast potato yummy bites that we're going to make. And a lot of the ingredients for this I actually made the day before. So I'm going to take you back to how we got here. So the first thing we need is bacon. And I have a few different types of bacon in my freezer, but I wanted to use a mixture of some of the belly bacon that I had gotten from Butcher Box, And then also some of the um, bacon that I had just from my local Kroger. So I wanted to get those. My plan originally was to make a pack of bacon for Livy to snack on for the next week or so, and then some for me, but uh, I ended up overcooking some of it, so it turned into a mixture. And then I needed some cheddar cheese, which I had grated and frozen in my freezer from an Azure Standard, Azure Standard order that we had um, picked up together a few months ago. And then I grabbed a little bag of leftover frozen shallots. So here you can see the two different types of bacon. And the way I like to cook the bacon um, for this application is I usually just put it on a baking sheet, line it with parchment paper, put it on a like a roasting or a cookie rack. And then I put it in the oven for 375 for anywhere from 25 to 40 minutes. It really just depends on how thick the bacon is. Um, now this one, I cooked one pan of them perfectly and then the other pan needed about three more minutes. I walked away, <laughs> got a little busy, forgot to set a timer when I came back. One of them was definitely crispier than the other, but still edible for sure. Plus the, um, belly bacon kind of had a darker, um, coating on the outside anyway to begin with. But then we went into the pantry and I needed to grab some potatoes. So instead of grabbing the smaller diced potatoes that we did together, I did choose the larger potatoes because they were from 2022 and I figured no big deal I will just dice them up a little bit so having canned potatoes is a really good pantry staple item because you can always just pull a jar out and you can make potato salad you can make hash you can make um, any soup you're making you can do with that you can they're just it's a really really easy because they're they're pretty much cooked and so all you have to do is warm them up um, so if you like a crisp them up, up, anything like that. So I usually just empty the jar and then I will rinse the jar um, just one more time to get the starchy water off. And then I'll either throw them as, as they are into a soup or whatever. But on this day, I wanted to get them diced up just a little smaller because they were going to be breakfast bites and I didn't want it to be a huge chunk of potato sitting in the middle of the breakfast bite. I wanted it to be little dices and I wanted to take a minute to... Um, actually season them up really well. Oh, my cutting board was moving. So a trick to that is get a wet paper towel, put it underneath your cutting board and the cutting board will stay still. So with the wet paper towel there, it was no problem to just go ahead and dice all of these potatoes up to the perfect size. Then I grabbed a baking sheet with some parchment paper and I was debating on how to season these. And then I was remembering the Starbucks version was a potato and chive, and I thought, well, I think I can do better than that. I think that not only are we going to add the bacon to it but and the cheese, um, but I'm going to do garlic chives that we grew in our garden last year and dehydrated. So I decided to grab some garlic chives next and get them chopped up. Now, dehydrated herbs, when you go to chop them, do make a little bit of a mess, so they were... <laughs> bouncing all over the place. Normally I dehydrate them into smaller bits, but this year I don't know why I just left them larger so that I could decide what I wanted to do with them. Anyway, they still taste really great. Garlic chives, if you've never had them before, are a must. I recommend them. Now, because we wanted to make this taste delicious, we are going to um, cook these up in a little bit of bacon grease. And at first I thought, well, I'll just put this on the, on the 
tray and I'll put it in the oven and once it melts down, then I'll go ahead and mix it. So I actually left it on the tray and then I thought, I went ahead and started seasoning the rest of it and then I thought, I do not wanna to have to stir these things a million times. So I ended up changing my mind on that. But for, for now, we're leaving them on there. So I did some fresh ground black pepper. Um, I did some salt and then I also did some garlic and onion powder that I always just have as a staple in my kitchen. One thing if you guys, um, oh, this is, I decided to um, microwave this just to melt it so that I could toss it together a little easier and that worked and saved myself a step from having to open up the hot oven. <laughs> but what I was gonna say about the garlic and onion powder is if you guys have um, mason jars, if you do any home canning or preserving and you have mason jars, um, then a trick that um, I just found out this year, and I'm sure other people have already known about it, but it was exciting to me, was the lids from Parmesan cheese with the shakers. Um, you can actually reuse those lids on all size um, regular mouth mason jars and so that means you can keep your herbs in mason jars and use the top as a shaker or because um, you know the parmesan cheese lids they have the one side that's a, these are the ones i'm talking about they have one side as a shaker and one side for you to put a spoon in so i ended up grabbing some garlic powder and some onion powder and seasoning these potatoes up we're going to throw them in the oven let them get nice and crisp and flavorful and then i just ended up tossing them in the fridge until i was ready to use them the next day so i'll show you what that looks like oh i did just throw the last of the bag of shallots on top of this as well so that i'll just cook together one dish really easy and we we're ready to go So I roasted these in a 400 degree oven. I think next time I would probably do it in a 425 or 450 because the insides are already cooked. Um, you're just looking to crisp up the outside and I didn't actually get these as brown as I wanted because I didn't want them to turn to mush. <laughs> I've got everything gathered and collected. So yesterday I went ahead and pre-made our ingredients. So we have, uh, dice roasted potatoes we have um well this i made a long time ago um, from an azure standard order i get my cheddar cheese in five pound blocks and shred it and put one pound at a time in a bag so i pulled an extra bag from the freezer to make sure and we're going to use up the one that i had in the fridge um, and then also i made bacon and i almost burned it <laughs> Some people would say it's burned. I would say it's just a little crispy. So we're gonna roll with it. So I've got, um, instead of doing muffin cups, I'm gonna do, you know, big kid size mini portions. So I'm gonna get some avocado oil, nonstick spray. I think I'm supposed to cook these at like 325. We'll go with 325, get that warming up. We'll get this. So here's what I'm thinking. I've got potatoes. I do have a second pan and I also have the muffin trays that I could fill with either nothing or parchment paper cups so that they'd be like single serve too. I'm just gonna have this ready. It's a second pan as an option. We'll get going on fill in. I'm gonna put the potatoes, I'm gonna chop up some bacon and then we'll do some cheese and then top off with eggs. You could fill these up with anything you wanted. I have this year together, we canned diced potatoes together and I realized I still had some from last year, but they were in bigger chunks canned as well and i thought well before i dig into the new year i'm gonna i usually use them for like soups like if i'm making like chowder or something like that it's just really convenient to pull out um some of the canned potatoes okay i have a little bit left but not enough to do like a whole other pan so but i don't want to make these too potatoey i want to save room for okay this is what I'm going to do. Whoa. 
Good catch. Okay. I'm going to do, I have a little six. You guys, I'm just knocking stuff over everywhere. Okay. Let me grab baking cups. Baking cups. I think I got enough to do a little six tray. I wonder if I should spray these too. Better safe than sorry. I think because it's parchment, they wouldn't really stick. We'll just do it just in case. I'm going to save the most perfect looking bacon for my kid because that's what we do. And then for me, so this was the belly bacon. It had a darker edge anyway, but I definitely, definitely overcooked it. So I'll do half that, half this. We'll see where we get with that. Still got a little bit of bite to it, a little bit of chew to it. We like that. Definitely gonna need more bacon, but that's okay. So my chickens, all of them pretty much kept laying through the winter, but two of them were on vacation from laying. <laughs> and the one is the only one I had that lays like a blue egg right now. And two days ago I walked in the coop and that blue egg was sitting there. <laughs> and I was like, yes, you're back. Her name is Angel. So Angel is back with us. Anyway, that means all of my chickens are laying again. So I am, I've got lots of eggs. So, which we've got lovely neighbors on this street who love Olivia's eggs. We call them Olivia's rainbow eggs. And she has some customers, but we're definitely back up to full capacity now. So this is the perfect time. I had kind of not been making breakfast burritos and stuff while it was downtime for the ladies, but we're back in it now. Okay, I'm gonna get some egg mixture mixed up. Oh wait, cheese. We're gonna get cheese sprinkled on this. I like to grate my own cheese because the grated cheese that you buy in the store, they put like an anti-caking agent on it. I don't know, I don't think it melts super great. And I don't wanna eat that stuff. So I just grate it in the food processor, stick it in a bag, put them in the freezer, pull them out when I need them. So we're gonna do cheddar. Might not need that second one. Okay, now we'll get a bowl and mix up some eggs. Okay, we're gonna get these eggs one at a time. Cracked. Put into here.
I have just a little bit of heavy cream that needs used up, so I'm going to go ahead and add that in there. You don't have to. You can add milk. You can add nothing. You can do what you like. However you want your egg mixture to be. We are going to top these off. If I need to make a little more egg, I can. But we'll just get started with this. All right, let me get a few more eggs. You guys, how did I do that where it perfectly <laughs> had enough egg? Woohoo! Okay, I'm gonna get these egg spillings cleaned up and then we'll put these in the oven. Okay, we're gonna let that cook. All right, it's been a little bit, not quite the full 45. So we'll give it a test to see if it works. Okay, supposedly you're supposed to do three tablespoon scoops, which are big. I don't have a scoop that big, so I'm gonna do two of my one and a half tablespoons. So I'm gonna put some of these, I'm gonna put them all on this one parchment sheet because I'm just gonna decide how many to cook after we get them made. I'm gonna go ahead and roll these out. Meet you back here when we're done. My friends, these are definitely larger than any cookie that I normally make for myself at home. This is definitely like bake sale size cookie for sure. Um, and if I was making it for something like that, I would definitely keep it to the original recipe and make it this size again. But um, you'll see how these cookies turn out. They end up turning out really, really beautifully and tasty. But for myself at home as a snack, I would probably make them one and a half tablespoon next time. All right, now that we have them rolled out, I'm going to, the recipe was spot on. It said it would make 20 to 22 cookies. Here's 22. <laughs> so these are very large cookies. So I'm gonna cook these four and I'm gonna freeze these 18, but because the egg stuff is in the oven and I wanna do one thing at a time, I'm gonna go ahead and put this whole tray in my fridge. I'll peel these off when it's time to cook and then I'll put the rest of them in the freezer. Still got a little jiggle. Give it another couple minutes. Good, these look. I'm gonna give the other ones one more minute, but I'm gonna get our dough out and ready to pop in the oven. Okay, 
I'm going to get this tray into the deep freezer. Beautiful. Okay, we'll get these right back where the other ones were. And these are going to bake for 13 or 14 minutes, but I'll set the timer for 11 minutes and we'll check on them then. Look how beautiful these look. They smell so good. All right, this said to give them five minutes to take them out of the pan. It's been five minutes. I did put a tent on the rectangular ones because a couple of them just needed an extra like minute. And I'm not that worried about it because I like my eggs a little soft and I'm going to microwave them when I cook them. So I'd rather them be a little on the softer side, but I figured I'd tent them just to give them a chance to do what they would. Mm, these smell so good. Ooh, that is still hot. Hot, hot, hot. Hot pan. I hope these come out. Oh, they will. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, I think about how to get these out without burning my fingers. I think I just have to be brave. A couple of them on the edge, got some brown sides, but I'm not worried about that either. I like a little bit of crispy cheese. And so those are going to continue cooling while we wait for our oatmeal scotchies to come out of the oven as well. It smells so good in my house, you guys. So good. These look good. It says the middles will look very soft. Let them sit for five minutes on the cookie sheet and then put them on a cooling rack. So that's what we're gonna do. We'll give it five minutes. It has been about five minutes. We're gonna get these awesome smelling cookies onto a cooling rack and let them cool for about five more minutes so I can't take it anymore and then I'm gonna eat one. <laughs> can't stand the wait. I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna taste one of these breakfast muffins. I know they're gonna be good, but just wanna taste. Look how beautiful and fluffy. So yummy, so, so good. Mm-hmm. That's really good. That's really good. That bacon is good. <laughs> okay, let's try one of these cookies. This is actually perfect timing because Olivia is going to be home in about 15 minutes from school. And I can get her to taste them too. Mm. Wow. I've never tasted anything like that before. Wow. Yeah, I like those a lot. Wow. It's like an oatmeal cookie, like oatmeal raisin cookie base, like that cinnamon oat. But then it's a little more brown sugar. And I think it's that molasses that's making it taste, wow. Between the molasses and the butterscotch chips, that is a flavor combination win. Mm. I'm gonna keep eating these. 
Boris are hmm. That's really good. You can make that. I just want to say thank you guys so much for spending the day with me today as we made some quick and easy breakfast, some yummy treats <laughs> for me. <laughs> um, and I just appreciate all of the comments and the likes and the shares. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please consider subscribing. We've got so much more growing and cooking and preserving to do here. So I can't wait to see you guys next time. I appreciate you guys so much. Bye, my friend. That was good.